Chip stock selling off today, extending recent losses. NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, Applied Materials all hitting 52-week lows. Now, U.S. restrictions on China's access to chips and dire demand forecast stoking those concerns out there that the sector's downturn may be longer and deeper than we initially thought. We want to bring in Chris Miller, the Fletcher School at Tufts Assistant Professor of International History and author of The Chip War, The Fight for the World's Most Critical Technology. Chris, it's great to see you. So these new curbs from the Biden administration, obviously, adding to that bearish sentiment out there on the street. I know you have been very closely tracking this global fight when it comes to chips. I guess what's your perspective of the new limitations that we got from the Biden administration? Well, they are a sweeping set of restrictions on the sale of certain advanced chips to China, as well as a whole set of chip making technologies that are really going to restrain China's advances in this sphere for some time to come. It will limit China's ability, for example, to uh, build out advanced data centers and deploy artificial intelligence. There's a risk, of course, that it also spurs China to invest even more in domesticating its own chip technology. But for at least the next couple of years, China will find it very difficult to get around these rules. They'll hurt some U.S. chip firms, but they'll hurt China even more. And what about just the risk of retaliation, too, right, as we have this escalating tension between the U.S. and China? Well, it's certainly a possibility. We can't rule it out. Uh, it is worth noting, I think, that in the past, when the U.S. has rolled out comparable restrictions uh, in terms of the transfer of tech to Chinese firms, like when the U.S. restricted the sale of chips to Huawei in 2020, China did nothing in retaliation. So if that's any guide, China might not do much this time. Of course, this is a more dramatic action than even the the assault on Huawei in 2020. So it's possible China could change course. But the reality is that China still needs U.S. chips, even though certain types of chips are no longer possible to sell to China. China spends more money importing chips than it spends importing oil. And that's been the case for the past decade. And so the Chinese realize they're in a weak position here. They've got to have access to chips made in the U.S. or chips made in Taiwan or South Korea that are based on U.S. technology. And unless the Commerce Department of the United States gives them approval, uh, that all could be cut off. Well, and Chris, going off of that, the fact that China has spent more on chips than they have spent on oil, I guess, just in terms of what is the potential fallout when we start to think about the economic consequences of this? Well, there are some foreign companies that will be hit, U.S. chip firms or chip makers uh, in Taiwan, for example. But the biggest impact will be felt by China's own tech firms, because uh, for a long time, investors have been betting that Chinese firms in the AI space, for example, or in chip making, will be able to continue to import technology from the U.S. and other Western countries that they need to improve their capabilities. And now all of that is being called into question. The chip war has really escalated. And now it's not clear that China is going to have access to the most advanced data center technologies for the next a couple of years and maybe the next decade. So in that sense, the U.S. is really putting the choke on China's advanced computing capabilities and Chinese firms that had hope to roll out artificial intelligence across uh, their operations will face more and more limitations in that regard because the cost of AI will be uh, very expensive, very power uh, uh, intensive without the most advanced chips. And as of last week's action, China will be unable to access these semiconductors. Yeah, clearly a massive uh, headwind and challenge here for China. In terms of creating their own semiconductor industry, obviously they lag far behind when you compare it to where we are here in the U.S. How long do you think it will potentially take them to catch up? Well, we're talking at least a fair number of years and potentially over a decade. They actually may never catch up given the amount of capital investment involved, given the really specialized machine tools that today can only be bought from the U.S. or Japan or the Netherlands. Today, China is a big player in the electronics market, but when it comes to chips, China is less than 10% of value add across the industry. And so for China to domesticate all of this technology is really an extraordinarily difficult and expensive prospect, which is why they've been very uh, openly relying on chip making technologies, as well as advanced chips from abroad for some time. This is not an industry you can just build from scratch overnight. Well, Chris, speaking of, I guess, of the expense of it, the cost of it to build out your own uh, semiconductor industry, how does that compare to other sectors here in the U.S., just in terms of the cost and what it's going to take in order to potentially have an industry that's comparable to what we have here in the U.S.? Well, the cost is, is really extraordinary. A new chip-making facility that's producing processor chips and memory chips can cost $20 billion, making them the most expensive factories in human history. 
there's really almost nothing that compares to a facility that's able to manufacture billions and billions of transistors, each one smaller than a coronavirus. This is the most complicated, precise manufacturing in history, which is why the race to dominate the sector is uh, so intense and so expensive. And we've we've seen earlier iterations of this chip war between different companies. That's why I called the book The Chip War. And we found that only a couple of companies have been able to keep up thus far, all relying on US and Japanese technology in particular. So for China to do this from scratch without access to foreign technology would just be very tough. Well, this is clearly a priority here for the Biden administration recently passing the CHIPS Act, a move here in order to try and entice chip makers to manufacture chips here within the United States. I guess what's key in terms of making sure that this actually succeeds here in the U.S.? I think it's pretty clear we're going to have more manufacturing of chips in the U.S. thanks to the incentives, $40 billion worth of incentives provided by the CHIPS Act. But the reality is that today, 90% of the most advanced processor chips can only be made in Taiwan. And so even despite that, we're spending uh, more money to entice uh, chip makers to build new facilities here. We're still going to be reliant on Taiwan to build our most advanced chips for some time to come. Uh, the CHIPS Act is a, is a good idea. I think I support the legislation, but we need to be realistic about what it can accomplish. Given that one advanced facility can cost $20 billion, $40 billion only gets us so far in an industry where capital investment is just very expensive. That's a good point there. All right, Chris Miller, great to have you. Author of Chip War, the fight for the world's most critical technology. Thanks so much for joining.